Zoe. All right, guys, we're joined by LA Galaxy head coach and sporting director, Greg Vanny. We'll start with a question from Damian Calhoun. Damian, go ahead. Hey, Greg. Um, first of all, can we get your thoughts, your thoughts on the match, and then I'll, I'll follow up with questions. Yeah, just uh, I thought the first half uh, in terms of just the defensive side of things, getting initiating pressure on the ball, directing them to where we wanted to play, we we really we struggled and they were able to they had a lot of time on the ball. Uh, they were able to rotate into their 3-4-3. Three, three. Guys were showing up behind guys because, again, it wasn't clear for us in terms of getting pressure on the ball. And we were in between things uh, too often, which means a lot of work, uh, a lot of work. Uh, just trying to recover the ball. We we adjusted a little bit. Uh, we adjusted midway through the first half, just trying to to manage the numbers that they were eventually pushing high by asking Tyler to play a little bit more of a wing back to manage the uh, the fullback who was taking up high positions uh, on the first goal. He kind of loses him uh, as the guy takes off and makes a run behind his back, and he needs to deal with that because Julian was coming inside to manage the guy that was playing in the gap. So I thought we were in the right positions. We had players to deal with the situation. We just fall asleep a little bit. They play it behind us and then they square one across and it's 1-0. Uh, it still wasn't, it wasn't as efficient obviously as we wanted, which required a lot of work and in, in the humidity and which was draining. Uh, so uh, again, it, it probably took a little bit of its toll through the course of the game. Uh, we were impatient with the ball. We, we needed to be a little bit more patient, just move the ball quickly and establish ourselves in possession. And we were, uh, yeah, I felt like, you know, they came pretty aggressive and, and we were a little disrupted by how aggressive they were pressing us and the ball just needed to move quicker from guy to guy and, and uh, we were a little bit slow in that way. So we, we never really established uh, possession in ways we could. And when we did in the first half, we, we rushed attacks. We took shots from distance instead of building and, and allowing our team to get control of the game force them to have to defend a little bit, which means that some of those numbers have to come back and defend. Uh, instead, we we rushed attacks uh, and then put ourselves right back into defensive situations again. So I thought that was the first half was was just that, rinse and repeat of a lot of that. And second half, we came out and readjusted into a, a really clear 3-5-2, uh, whereas the first half was kind of a modified version of it. And we went came out in a really clear one. We just felt like I felt like we needed the first thing we needed to do was be more efficient recovering the ball. It wasn't going to be any attacks until we we got better defensively and clearer defensively and could recover the ball in better places and control their possessions and their attacks. I thought we did a better job of that by and large. We were able to start attacks in better positions and therefore create more good chances um, off of better defending. Uh, you know, the the second goal comes where. We recover the ball and we need to go wide and we try to jam it right back up the middle and it comes right back at us. It was just it was just way too many people in the middle of the field for us to be playing that ball through the middle of the field and it came right back down our throats instantly. We needed to go wide, reestablish our positions because we were we were spread a little bit. If we would have, I, I think we sur we survived the moment for sure and and you know it game stays at one zero. We go down two. Uh, again, we continue to create chances. We're, we're, you know, we're working hard defensively to recover balls. Occasionally, we get ourselves a little bit exposed in situations we have to deal with it because we're pushing some numbers. Uh, but again, we created some good chances. JK makes a couple great saves, obviously, to keep things, uh, you know, close at least. And um, yeah, and I think. That becomes the game you know we we still had some chances to maybe get one and make it even and and i think we had one great chance really at at one zero to make it one one and within a, maybe a minute or two later they went down and scored to make it two zero uh so yeah we knew coming across the country for this game was just was going to be a grind and a battle and and it was um yeah we needed to be more efficient specifically on the defending side and, and keeping possession just Again, the conditions here, even though it's April, it's still a lot more humid than we're used to. And it just is, if you're not efficient, then it wears on you. And, and we, made, we made some mistakes inside of that that, that cost us. And um, yeah, and that becomes the game. Uh, the broadcast spoke about how you guys are just too narrow um, in attack, I believe. Not much width. Um, I assume you didn't get what you wanted out of uh, Douglas and Boyd as well. They were the first two off. Yeah, I mean, I, I think 
first of all, it, sometimes to get with, you've got to establish some possession, you know, and, and in the first half, we, we worked hard as a narrow group to try to recover the ball. And then when we got it, we weren't transitioning fast enough to reestablish some width. We didn't hold the ball long enough to give ourselves a chance to kind of establish width. So, uh, you know, therein lies some of the challenges that existed from that standpoint when you say, you know, or if somebody says we didn't have width and it becomes a combination of those things. You know, if you if uh, if you're defending as a narrow block because they've got four guys in between your lines, uh, then you've got to be able to recover the ball and, and transition and get your width out to its its positions and be at least secure enough to give them time to get there. And so I felt like, again, that was part of our issue and why we weren't securing the ball. Part of it is we were hesitating, I think, sometimes to play guys who might have had a little pressure on them, but we needed to use them to, to link up to get somewhere else where we could find some time. Uh, I thought we just hesitated at times and... Um, and needed to just be sharper, give ourselves a better chance to get into good positions to advance our attacks and set up possession and, and try to control the game with the ball a little bit more. So, yeah, I'm, that's a, it's fair enough to say. Uh, again, just as we went to, the, to a really clear 3-5-2, it still became we just recovered balls in better areas. And, and by recovering balls in better areas, we gave ourselves just a much better chance and much more efficient and a much better chance to, uh, you know, to, to keep it and to try to secure some possessions and set up and play. All right, thank you. We'll go with Alex Reese. Hey, Greg, uh, second straight week that we see uh, Javier and Dayan start together. Um, just kind of your assessment on their, on the pairing tonight. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, again, I think some of it sometimes comes down to the defending side, especially on the road in a tough place to play like this. Uh, you know, it's getting not just those two, but the four guys that are kind of in the front part of the field who are who are managing our attacks to make sure that we get on a day like the, today, uh, you know, efficient and, and collective defending that we're working and they're, they're creating enough clarity for the guys behind to try to recover balls to to deal with situations so and I think those four guys collectively uh, were a little disjointed on it on initiating pressure on directing the game into certain areas of the field to make it clear for other guys and so I don't think it was a matter of just the two of them I just think the four weren't weren't super connected and, and moving at the same speed and and directing the game and then again it comes down to then we're, we're inefficient uh, recovering the ball, and then it makes it really difficult for forwards to be valuable when when you're when you're recovering balls deep in your half the field. Then they're just they're playing a game of trying to sometimes manage long balls, trying to hold up things to bring the team in, try to win time, and that's uh, you know that's a tough existence for long stretches. Second half, I thought there was some decent moments that were that showed a little more clarity and a little more possibility inside of it. Um, just in general, it was a collective thing and not just about those two, you know, but always with two forwards, it's just going to be about uh, being able to balance the efficiency of the defending side along with the possession and, and chance creation. But again, I thought over, especially in the second half, we created some good moments. We created some chances and some good chances, and there was a goal or two in there for us that we didn't come away with uh, on a day that, that, um, that was difficult for us. Yeah, I kind of just want to know from your perspective, what's one thing that you really want to see this team kind of be better in? I know there's been a lot of things you mentioned, but, you know, through these nine, ten games so far, is there something that kind of stands out that this team needs to improve on? Yeah, I, look, I think I think it's inside of games continuing to be able to uh, to adjust and to adapt to make sure that we protect ourselves and that we can defend well and control and keep ourselves at zero zero uh, be efficient in the ball recovery because that's going to set up everything that is going to be with our attacks you know in terms of whether it's transition defending or initiating and working together as a group defensively because if we can do that well then the attacking side it gives our attack a better chance to be successful inside of it uh, today was a day where you know, we we weren't efficient on the defending side, and it it, impact, it impacted all the game, especially in the first half. The second half, it became a little bit better, uh, for sure, and and we were we were uh, better than on the attacking side as well. Uh, inside of that, though, we still make a couple decisions that just we need to make better those better decisions. We we have to be very careful forcing things down the middle. It's something that has hurt us through the course of the season because it just creates counterattacks. We've got to be we've got to be uh, 
better at, at when balls come out like that, that we push it out wide and we overload outsides and then we work our way back across. So, I mean, the things like that are just us, again, being more efficient and cleaner on the defensive side. Like we did last week, we kept the game at zero uh, and we were able to get ourselves into the game, score the goal, then get the second goal. And we've got to be, we've got to be able to do that. And today we made, you know, more than a couple, but we made a couple big mistakes that cost us goals as well. But it was by by no means a uh, you know a fantastic performance in the second half. I thought it was a gutty performance in the sorry in the first half. That was a gutty performance in the second half, which created some good moments for ourselves. But it was uh, it was an uphill battle for sure. Yeah, and despite the score li- oh, despite the score line, um, any positives you can take away from this game? Yeah, I mean, we'll take something out of out of every game. There was some good stuff when we shifted into the three five two that again that that was valuable for us to see. Uh, so um, you know, the more we use that, the more comfortable we can get inside of using it. Uh, we get. Uh, I thought there was some good chance creation inside of some of those things, uh, some of those moments. Just some some good play. Uh, so there'll there'll be little things here and there to take out of it, but it's you know it it's all kind of. It's muted a little bit right now with the emotion of just, you know, the grind and, and losing. And then, you know, we'll review the video and, and uh, take some things out and, and take some things to get better at. And we'll go with the questions here. Yeah. Oregon Mr. Stark lost 2-0 uh, here in Orlando. But I look at the positive, you're going home and you got two MLS games and also a home yeah. game to host against uh, Sounders. Do you think it's a good... Uh, to the wrong point to start and change how LA Galaxy is, is doing right now? Yeah, you know, I, I hope so. It's never, you know, we got off the momentum of winning last week on a good performance and solid, and it's not easy to come all the way across the country and uh, and play a game. We wanted to play better. We wanted to get something out of this game, but it's a, it's a, this is a tough place to play. I mean, they came off of losing at home last week. They were super motivated to to try to turn their fortune around at home. We didn't manage the situation well. Now we got to go back with three games at home. We've got to try to, uh, we got to try to build some momentum in those three games uh, with our performances, with our results and, and continue to try to build off of it. But it's it's never in this league to go easy to go across the country and, and win a game. You maybe want to come in and play better and grind some things and uh, and get away with, with uh, one and maybe three, but this is a, it's a tough place and a tough team. And uh, today they made it really, they made it tough on us. So credit to them. And now we've got to go home and we've got to, uh, again, we've got to up our performances and we've got to get results back and get some momentum out of it. Hello, Coach. Marco Quesada from Costa Rica. So I want to ask you about Gino Bibi. So is the new, the new guy in the, yeah. in the roster. So. It's a long time wait for, for him, for you, but what do you expect about him? Yeah, uh, questions about Gino. He's, uh, look, he, he's come into camp after the draft and he's, uh, he's been dynamic. He's fit in well with the group. Uh, he gives us a little bit something different than what we see sometimes, which is just some sharp, quick, aggressive movements. He's, he's uh, working to get behind the back line and he's, he's been really solid for us, you know, even though he hasn't been able to play and it's been a long process uh, negotiating to get everything situated and now he's still waiting on his visa which hopefully will happen soon uh, but the kid continues to work incredibly hard and integrated in the group and it gives us a little bit something different than than we have inside of our group that that can help us so uh, we look forward to it he's like I said he's he's working his tail off and he deserves his opportunity